All right, good morning, 300. Um, today we're gonna be talking about starting your first design challenge where you guys are gonna build your own scale. So we'll go over the assignment, what we hope to learn through this, and kind of what the assignment looks like. All right, so here's what we'll be doing. We are going to be talking about calibration, amplification, and sensitivity and resolution uh, through this assignment. So for calibration, we'll talk about how do we take an instrument and set it up so that we can compare it against known good standards um, and know that its output is correct. Uh, we'll talk about amplification, so if we have a very small signal that we need to capture somehow with our data acquisition hardware, how do we amplify that signal to get it to a state where we can uh, easily capture it and look at it. And then sensitivity and resolution is what's the limits of what our instrument is capable of? How small of a change in the measured variable can it see? So those are the topics to be paying attention to uh, while we go through this activity. So for what you guys are going to be asked to do is you're going to be asked to build a scale. And we'll give you one of three mass ranges that your scale has to work with. Um, so 0 to 30 grams, 0 to 150 grams, or 0 to 1,000 grams. So you'll want to build a scale or design a scale that can handle that weight range and is designed for that weight range. All right. Once you have your scale, you're also going to be asked to set up an experiment to determine the resolution of the scale. So resolution is just the smallest change in a measured variable detectable by an instrument. That's all it means, right? So it's just how small of a change can you see? All right, the smaller your resolution is, the more sensitive your instrument is, the easier it is to see uh, really small changes in your measured variable. That typically comes with a trade-off in terms of range and cost of the, the instrument system. So we'll talk more about that in a separate video. All right, so we've given you three different options of how you can build your scale. Uh, sort of three basic design concepts. It's up to you to choose one of those that's most interesting to you and then to design an actual system based around that concept. Uh, so the first one here is a strain measurement, right? So we have a bunch of strain gauges in the lab. So strain gauge is essentially a resistor that gets actually physically glued onto some sort of structure. And when the structure is loaded and the material in the structure starts to strain, these, these resistors that are glued on are going to stretch a little bit, and that affects the resistance of the strain gauge. Okay? Um, from that change in resistance, we can determine how much the structure has been strained, and then we can use material properties and known geometry of our structure to determine what the load on that structure was. Right? So that is the idea here. You'll, to use a strain gauge, you'll need to construct a Wheatstone bridge circuit that will convert this really small change in resistance into a measurable change in voltage. There'll also probably be an amplification stage in your instrument to get the change in voltage to be big enough that you can easily capture it with the DAC. Uh, we've given you here a, a link to a guide. I'll throw this in the YouTube description as well. Uh, that National Instruments put out just sort of an introduction to strain gauges that gives you a lot of the relevant equations and uh, some of the circuits that you'll need to actually use a strain gauge and take a strain measurement. All right, so a, a, to use the strain gauge effectively to build a scale, you need some sort of well-defined structure that you can attach the strain gauge to where it's easy to calculate what the strain in the structure should be for a given load. Um, a cantilever beam with a point load on it is a really easy system to build and it's also easy to, to model compared to other structures also. Um, so that will be where you fix a beam to something that's not going to move, then you put a mass out on the end of it to give a, give a load, a point load on that uh, cantilever beam. The beam is going to bend and we can calculate what the strain in that is going to be. So a couple of useful equations that you might remember from your mechanics and materials classes is the sigma equals my over i. So sigma is going to be the stress due to bending, shear stress due to bending in your cantilever beam. M will be your bending moment that uh, you get from applying a load to the end of the beam. Y is the distance from the sort of neutral axis to the very center line of your beam if you're looking at it edge on. Uh, up to the top of the beam is typically where you'll measure the, the, the strain. And then I would be the moment of inertia based off the cross section of your beam. Um, from there, you can use the material science version of Hooke's Law 
where you have your Young's modulus and your stress and your strain. Use that relationship uh, to determine how much strain is going to going to be present in your beam, right? And then you can relate that directly to the load that you're applying to the beam, also. Um, so that's one way that you could go with this project. Um, we have everything in the lab. We've got a lot of aluminum bars um, that typically work pretty well. You can decide what length you want based off of the weight range that your scale is targeting. Um, we can polish a spot on that beam, attach a strain gauge, and then you can build the circuit to make your strain measurements, and we can calibrate that here in the lab also. All right, second concept would be to do something based off of spring displacement. Usually uh, the way we do this one is if you have some sort of like a balance beam type system where on one end you have a extension spring um, and on the other end we put our, put our mass and we have this lever arm that's stretching out the spring. All right, we can use Hooke's Law if we measure the spring constant of the spring ahead of time. We can figure out how much that spring should move or stretch based off of a given load that's put onto the scale, right? Um, to do this successfully, we need to figure out how much that lever arm is going to move when we give a, a put a certain load on the lever arm, um, and we need a way of measuring that, right, with LabVIEW. A good way to do that is with a slide potentiometer, all right, so a slide potentiometer is a device we typically build it out of a nichrome wire, which is just a wire that's a nickel chromium alloy, and it has a, a fairly high resistance per unit length. So what you can do is you can stretch out your piece of nichrome vertically, right? And we, we put a voltage across that. So we have essentially a big resistor at the top uh, would be V in, at the bottom we get a V at, or a ground, sort of zero volts down there. And then we make a third contact, right? that's a movable wiper. So it's like some sort of brush. You can just take the wire and press it up against the um, nichrome wire and slide it up and down that slide potentiometer. And as you do that, the voltage that you measure at that wiper contact is going to change. We typically call the wiper voltage V out, and it varies linearly uh, depending on the displacement or its position along that piece of nichrome wire. So that can be a good way to make a position sensor, and you can couple that with the, the balance beam sort of design, and uh, you make a very effective scale that way also. All right, and then uh, to do that calculation, you also need to keep in mind Hooke's Law. So the key thing here is you need to know the spring constant of your spring. Um, we have a whole bunch here in the lab. You can go up, you can measure them, and uh, get an estimate of what the spring constant is there so that you can use that number in your design calculations. All right, uh, and then the third and final type of scale that you guys could build is you could build a scale based off of a simple harmonic oscillator, right? So this is typically just a mass with a hanging off of a spring. And if you perturb that system, like you pull it down and let it go, the mass is going to bounce up and down, right? And the frequency that that mass is going to bounce up and down at is a function of the, the mass of the bob on the end of the spring and also the spring constant. But we can change that mass and the, the natural frequency of the system is going to change also. Okay? So the cool thing here is LabVIEW's got a ton of really great tools built into it for analyzing different frequencies. Right? Um, we can show you how to use those. and. You can, you can definitely set this up, we can calibrate it, um, and one of the cool things about this is it shows sort of the power of a frequency uh, measurement, right? So sometimes it's much easier to measure the frequency of some system rather than an absolute displacement. This system is a really good example of that. If you make a very small change in mass and you are just trying to measure the displacement of the spring, like how much the spring stretches, based off of a, you know, like a one gram change in, in the mass hanging off of that, generally the change in displacement is going to be so small, it's very difficult for us to actually see that happen. But what we can do is uh, we can measure that frequency and there'll be a very noticeable change in frequency based off that small change in mass. And it's really, with, with some of the tools that we have available to us in LabVIEW, it's really easy to see small changes in frequency and get a very precise scale that way which is pretty cool also. All right, so let's take a look at just the overview of the assignment here. So the assignment's kind of broken up into two 
two and a half sort of major parts here. So the first part would be our design calculation. So we want to design our scale. The idea here is we want to have a really good idea of what we're looking for when we get into the lab so that we can work efficiently, right? So it's easy to get lost in the hardware when you come in and you start setting things up and your system could not be working very well, but if you don't have an idea of what you're looking for, it's hard to know that you're off on the wrong track until you've wasted a lot of time being off on the wrong track. Um, so you can work a lot more efficiently if we have an idea of what the scale should do before we come in. And then when we start collecting data, we can say, yeah, that looks pretty good, or mm, this is not what I had originally predicted. There's probably something wrong, so I need to double check my calculations or double check my experiment to uh, make sure that we get good agreement here. All right, so um, the first thing that you guys are gonna do is you'll design your scale and you're gonna create we call it a theoretical calibration curve. So the calibration curve just relates the input of an instrument to its output. All right, so we've got an example of that here. You can see down on the x-axis, we have some sort of generic input value, just given in whatever units we're using. In this case, you're gonna have mass will be your input um, to probably your units will be grams. And then on the y-axis, you have the output. So what's the scale's response? Like what is it going to do in response um, to these different masses. So if you're doing the strain gauge project or the spring displacement, your output, your scale's response is probably gonna be in volts, would be the logical unit to use there. Um, both the, the Wheatstone bridge circuit with an amplifier or uh, the slide potentiometer are gonna give you a scale response in volts. If you're doing the spring mass uh, system, then your response is gonna be in frequency, right? So what we wanna do is produce this graph where for our given weight range, we graph what the scale's response is gonna be over that weight range. And then when we do our calibration experiment in lab, we can compare to that theoretical curve and you should get something that's pretty close, right? If it may not agree exactly, that's why we do calibration. Um, so that if there's any uncertainty in how we have built our scale, if things aren't quite how we plan them out on paper, we can take care of that. But you should be in the ballpark is, is generally what we're looking for there. All right, once we've got a good idea of what our scale is gonna do, we've got a solid design, we know what we're expecting when we see in the lab, we actually come in, we'll build the scale, and then we're gonna perform a calibration experiment. So we'll have a whole nother video that just talks about what calibration is and how we set up an experiment to know that our um, instrument is working and how we calibrate it so that we can have a reliable output from our, our instrument. Um, so you do that, once you have your calibration done, We'll talk about how you can make a sub-VI that contains your experimental calibration uh, curve. So you can put that into your main VI and then you'll have a calibrated instrument where you can put an unknown mass onto your scale and it will tell you the mass in grams, right? That is the ultimate goal of where we're trying to go, right? So we wanna be able to take some unknown mass, put it on our instrument and the instrument tells us what the mass is, okay? Uh, from there, we'll also work on some documentation. So this will be the uh, second and a half major part of the report or project here is, is that you'll write a report, right? And what we're looking for here is that you write an engineering report. It's aimed at a fellow engineer who's just not familiar with, with what you're doing in your project. So you give the background of what kind of experiments you did and why, you know, why did you decide to go with this design? Show your calculations um, that of how you arrived at, at the design that you did and what the expected output of your scale was and then show that your results hopefully agreed with what you predicted originally, all right? And we'll focus on presenting the results using clear figures and text. So we'll talk more about that in class also. Um, anyhow, that is the general overview of the assignment. So be sure to swing by the lab, ask questions, um, get ideas for how you wanna carry out building your scale and we'll see you guys in person.